Hi guys, alright, I just want to give an account of something that happened to me uh, about a year ago. Actually, yesterday made 11 months. But my name is Mark and I'm from Trinidad and Tobago. It's the last island in the Caribbean. Yes, we do speak English. It's bad English, but it's, it's English. So I'll try to speak uh, slowly so that you might be able to, to understand. Um, last year, 2016, in February, actually the 1st of February, just around end of January to February, I was in Colombia in a paragliding competition. And on the 1st of February, I had a, a fatal fall. So I'll, I'll give the account leading up to the fall. And I just hope it, it bless your heart. I hope that it might be able to touch someone. Um, but I'll give you the idea, exactly the story, exactly what happened. Jesus, Lord, all glory is yours, Lord, Lord, I don't know what to say, God. I fall from 2600 meters, Lord, and nothing happened to me. While I was on this trip, I always try to, you know, evangelize my friends, always try to let them know who Christ is and I am a Christian and I'm, I would like to think that I am a practicing Christian that I am a, a well-rounded good Christian a Christian that serves and I always try no matter where I go what I do to to represent Christ as best as I can but on this particular day I was in this competition paragliding and I was at 8500 feet and it was a day that I wasn't in the best of health. I was very sick that day, and I probably should not have been flying on that day. But because I love paragliding so much, I decided to, to fly. And the day before, I made goal, so I was very much excited about making goal on another day. Anyway, I was probably one through the competition, and I was almost at a particular checkpoint. I was at 8,500 feet, and as I was about to turn to exit the checkpoint, I had a collapse on my glider. And the glider came in front of me, and it spiraled, the lines twisted, and I started to spiral, and I just absolutely could not control the glider by any means necessary. And I tried for a few seconds, to correct the problem on the glider and realize I absolutely couldn't, couldn't fix it. So the glider ended up in the death spiral. So I was spiraling downwards um, from 8600 feet and I realized I couldn't really do anything. So I wanted to throw out the reserve chute before, the, before I blacked out. And as I threw the reserve chute, well, it didn't open because the glider came around and it all got tangled up in one mess and I had absolutely nothing I could do at that point in time. So it was then I realized that I would die and I had no choice at this point in time and there was nothing I could do so I decided to just pray. And my prayer was simple. I just called out to Christ and I said, Lord, forgive me for my sins and please accept me into the kingdom of heaven. And whatever I did, knowingly or unknowingly, forgive me for it. So I was still falling and I still had time. So I decided, you know what, maybe I should preach some more. So I prayed for my wife and I prayed for my kids. I have two boys and I prayed for both of them. And we are all Christians. So I prayed that they would not give up on God. They will not think that God, you know, forgot them. And, you know, I'll be dead and I just absolutely wouldn't be there to provide for them and life would probably change. So I just pray that, you know, they will still hold on to Peter Christ. And, and I just continued falling. And then I saw the tree line coming up and I realized, well, okay, this is it. Probably wouldn't hurt because I was falling quite rapidly. And I hit the ground. And when I hit the ground, absolutely nothing happened to me. I, I, I started videoing at that point in time. Um, so you'll see the video um, on YouTube. And nothing happened i thought my arm was was broken or injured and i had to split the arm to you know to make it quicker but absolutely nothing happened to me 
And at that point in time, I just felt the presence of God just fill inside of me like I've never experienced. So I, I dropped on my knees and I just started to pray because I just had to give God thanks for, for saving me from the fall. And it's only after I realized that the fall was approximately 120 kilometers per hour was the descent rate and it took 86 seconds to hit the ground. On hitting the ground, when I looked at my paraglider, uh, the seat, I realized that a spike, a stake, a piece of wood had gone through the entire seat and it was not injured in any, any way. I didn't hit any trees, I hit straight onto the ground. Um, one part of the glider, a very small part, was caught on one tree, but the glider the seat hit directly onto the floor and no trees assisted to say that it broke the fall in any way as you would see on the video but it was so amazing i was just in awe about what god did and how he was able to just protect me and realize that god is so real so i just want to encourage you to fail to realize that god is not a god that is far away he's a god that is there with you like a brother and a friend right next to you that is always there with you regardless if you realize it or not now after this had happened i was still not well and i didn't know what to do so i said lord if you could save me from this fall then you can't take me out of this this jungle because i had no direction i had no clue where to go my phone was broken it was not working at that time which i repaired later on but at that time it wasn't working my compass got a crack I couldn't pick anybody up on the radios because of the tree coverage and I had absolutely no idea where I was and I just prayed and God told me what to do and he said you know he saved me from that fall and he could get me out so I just packed up all my gear and started heading out in the direction that he told me to go. So I traveled for some time and while on the journey out you know God was just directing me go left, go right, go down this path and I just continued doing that and at one point in time there was this mountain ridge and I decided to climb that mountain ridge to see how far it was I needed to go or if I was going in the right direction. So I tried to go up that ridge and as I was going up that ridge it became so difficult to get to the top of that ridge that I absolutely sometimes couldn't even make one step forward. As well as the, the paragliding equipment is quite heavy so it was very challenging to keep moving through the tick terrain with the equipment. So after a while I realized it just did not make sense. And then God spoke to me and said, you know, you are trying to number the Israelites. And I realized that I had to totally trust God. This is the same God that just saved me from a fall from the sky from 8,500 feet and yet still I was still trying to, to do what I wanted to do and not have the confidence, not have you know the, the feet to just follow what you were selling me to do. So I came back down that mountain and I took the paragliding bag off and left it right there. The GPS, the, um, well not GPS but I used the um, altitude to mark exactly where it was and at this time I was in um, in like a, a trench a river a dry river trench and I just continued down that trench and it took some time eventually I realized that I was getting out and I was getting you know back into civilization because I came across um, barbed wire across the trench and I realized that I was getting out of the, the dense jungle now all of this time I, I didn't feel scared I wasn't really worried you know I felt that I could manage but it was very challenging physically and as well as I didn't have any water I had maybe 10, 10 ounces of water left from maybe a small bottle of water that I had earlier on on that day and I was just saving that water but I was very very dehydrated anyway I started hearing the choppers and I realized that yes there there is a rescue team that was looking for me and I decided to try and make a signal fire so that I could signal the choppers they would know where, where I am. I tried on two occasions and each time I almost get that fire going using a magnifying glass. Um, the clouds would just block the sun and I would not be able to start that fire. As well as 
I was trying to fix that the phone and I had to re reset the SIM card which I did I was not sure it was working but um, later on as I kept traveling I kept moving out from the heavy terrain I heard the choppers again and I decided to try to reach the stop of this ridge and I could see the ridge had a little clearing and while I was going on the top of that ridge I heard my phone beep knowing that yes I was getting some sort of signal and the phone was working but unfortunately I didn't have any money on my phone to make a call so it was it was bad make sure make sure you put money on your phone so that you can make a call in case of emergency I learned my lesson anyway I reached the top of the ridge and the choppers were very close so I tried again to make a signal fire and again a cloud cover the cover the sun I was not able to make the fire and the choppers were so close I could see the people inside of the choppers there were two choppers and they flew off but I did have data and I was able to make a call um, on the whatsapp to send a message to say that I was alive and they responded immediately and from there they started to, to organize the ground rescue which was already you know looking to me at this point in time but they told me that to wait there and the choppers would come back so I, I sat on that tree and I drank the last amount of water that I had waiting for the choppers to return which they didn't and then I got a message saying that they would not be coming back and that I had to come out with the ground crew on land on foot and I was really really dehydrated really tired at this point in time so it was very disappointed I was I was like totally upset you know it go to extent because I was really tired and really you know broken down at this point but I just continued and you know I said God what to do and then we lost all signal on the phone and God told me you know he'll get me out so just just let's go and we just end up just leaving at that point in time I didn't get any signal from the ground crew after that point in time and I guess continued out and it took a while and it was very challenging but long and short is that I had to cross three mountain tops and three valleys and God continued just directing you know my path and telling me what to do and what not to do and I just listened to him and I came all the way out back into civilization and when I met up with the ground crew everybody was in shock that I was alive that I fell that distance and was alive but I just want to say that falling was one part and yes God kept me on that fall and, and protected me on that fall and I give him all the glory for that but I had to listen I had to listen to God listen to his voice to get out when you looked at the flight computer the flight the journey out from the jungle was a direct straight line and it was almost impossible to come out in such a short time and each person was like so amazed that you know, I was able to survive but also I was able to come out in a very straight line in a very short space of time and all glory is to God I had actually nothing to do with it I just listened to what he told me and I just did it but what I really want to say and what I want to encourage people is that if I didn't have 86 seconds to call out to Christ to say Lord forgive me of my sins I would not be here today and sometimes you could get in an accident something could happen in your life and you may not have one second to repent you may not have one minute one second nothing there's absolutely no time and just like this new year there's no time to wait no time to pretend and to play with God God is ready for you and God is ready for you to do a job for him and now is your time and now is the time to repent now is the time to turn to him He's not interested in anybody who's lukewarm. And even I thought that, you know, I was serving him in all fullness, but I wasn't. And this experience made me realize how much more and how much things I could do for God. And in this past year, I've done so much more. I've done more in this year than I've done in my whole life. And God has really changed my life around because of this experience. And I want to encourage each person to just dig in deep and to just serve God, find God. Now, this account is really a very short 
shorten the version of what really happened and on later videos i'll expand on lots of other things that happened in in the jungle lots of stuff that happened before the, the actual fall and things that happened after and i just hope that you know in some way that i might be a blessing to somebody and that they would listen to these videos and they will look at it and it might be able to touch you in some way and i'm just a cool away you could subscribe to the videos and we will continue to put up videos and i just hope that it will be an encouragement to, to everyone that is listening to us so thank you and god bless